Yeah, it's a good reason to not do that. But it's funny that all these price changes, like I'm feeling like we're going to be fucking boomers talking to like the younger kids and be like, I remember when gas was a nickel or fucking just cigarettes were like 10 bucks or whatever. Like it's just going to be, I don't know if it'll ever go back. You know what I mean? I don't oh, know. No. It's, it's like going to be, it's going to be us talking about, I remember when gas still powered cars and people actually could afford to have them instead. And it's going to be just like electric <laughs> hell world. I remember, I when, remember I could, when I could leave my phone at home and not worry about anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember when I could raise my child as the as their uh, born sex. <laughs> That's kind of escalating there a little bit. I didn't need a chip to to go into the store or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the mark of the beast. I didn't, I need, I could pay I didn't need a QR code tattooed to my arm. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that fucking I hate all that QR code. Uh, Elon this is at trustworthy Slav. This is at incognito coh. CRK black dot com build. This is the Fed Post. people are retarded yeah Buttigieg is like you know and and uh all these libs what was it colbert was like just get a fucking tesla get a fucking (laughs) tesla bro Uh uh-huh fucking piece of shit i mean like the energy secretary was like in the white house briefing room laughing about inflation prices and about gas going up talking about well if you just drove an electric car it wouldn't matter are you fucking kidding me dude See, I don't know. People tell me that it's more affordable than I imagine because I imagine it as being like very expensive. I know Teslas are like known for being like luxury, like, you know what I mean? But like they're telling me like, no, the Elon stands were like, no, bro, they've got like the 40K model and the, the 50K model, whatever. Like, bro, just take out a loan, dude. Dude, just take out a loan. It's a good <laughs> idea, man. You just got to like take saying, on a little debt here. Come on. Yeah, just just put a little put a little money down and then put yourself in debt. And then if you can't pay it back, don't worry. They'll repo it for you and uh, <laughs> they'll turn on the car and unlock it, drive it out of your driveway. You won't yeah. even notice it's gone. And that's the thing with this Tesla shit that I really can't stand where it's just basically all of this function inside of the car is as a service. It's all there and you just have to pay more money for them to unlock it. I'm like, I don't want to drive a fucking like inkjet printer that I have to pay to be yeah. connected to a service. <laughs> Downloadable content. I don't want that shit. I just want a the vehicle. Car is a it. service. That's where we're at now. Damn. <laughs> They're really doing that? I didn't know that. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. I don't know. I mean, again, I just I also just love like I also just love like how ignorant it is that people people just think like, yeah, like like electricity, electricity coming out of like an outlet in your garage that you'll <laughs> like charge the Tesla on is is just like a magical uh, supply, you know, yeah. like like there, it has nothing to do with uh, any of the rest of like the energy system going on. It's, it's what a joke. Yeah, it's well, got nothing to do with natural gas or, uh, you know, like oil uh, refineries or coal powered plants like that anything like that no it just comes out thin air. solar panels on my roof and a windmill outside by my by my yard that's how mine's powered that's how I do it. <laughs> you know if you if you bought a windmill and uh solar panels and hydroelectric mills this wouldn't be affecting you right now <laughs> Yo, well, somebody had. That, that's ahead. the that's the thing about this sort of like it's like it's like homey you know like a homeopathic treatment like you're only getting like the smallest possible particle to somehow help you. That's how what our politics is. It's homeopathic politics, or it's just like oh we have X Y Z problem. We're gonna take this tiny sliver of a policy or a political idea, and that's gonna fix everything. It's like oh we we just banned Russian oil and natural gas imports, which are negligible compared to the fact that we're not really doing anything of our own energy production and it's just like electric cars that's the solution and they don't think about you know we need natural gas for electricity oil to produce things semiconductors and all this other crap you're just focused on this tiny particulate of a solution and then that's what gets marketed Mm. out to everybody and this is where you get you know discount john stewart saying i don't mind paying 15 dollars a gallon because i have an electric (laughs) car it's just a very big ignorant fuck you and i don't even think it's ignorant anymore i think it's just straight up malice yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. I really I really do think that like uh like <laughs> like a, a weird amount of all of this is is literally just 
like strategies protecting the uh the administration from criticism <laughs> like uh yeah. like it, yeah. it's now it's now bad to uh it, there's been enough sleight of hand to where like it's now bad to just criticize the cost of consumer goods and groceries and like uh it's it's like highly partisan to complain about the cost of gas it's like partisan to like talk about supply chain issues yeah or infrastructure um, yeah, or infrastructure. Like, that's like, I mean, it speaks for itself. I mean, I mean what can I even say about that? Right? What does the right say? The, the war on noticing things, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's I notice I'm getting killed. Recognition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I notice. I'm sure they mean it in a different way, but I'm, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, I'm getting killed. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I noticing. That. Dude, I'm just noticing 51% of things, is all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that is wild that is partisan that's fucking insane man that's fucking insane and it's also like that thing where they uh i remember like when covid was starting these i would hear some libs be like why are the why are these uh republicans making it political why are they making the mass political why are they doing this like bro this is like it's like as if as if like having an issue with it is political as if it's not like affecting everybody's life like it's again like you know the culture war thing like None of this shit is fucking culture war. There's nothing culture war about insane gas prices and most people use fucking gas cars. Like there's nothing what what is the culture war about that? I don't understand that. Like I don't understand that. Like what's what's like left or right socially about that? I, there's nothing. That that dimension doesn't apply. But of course they have to like, you know, that's how they do with all this shit like, you know, uh if you're getting fired over a fucking vaccine, like that has to be tethered to uh, uh Nazism, tethered to like social uh, values with like uh like uh right wing social values like what the fuck is i don't understand i i just it's just amazing how that's like it's been pretty effective like that that strategy of tethering those things like it's it's just been yeah it's been working and and yeah they're using russia to 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 get cover for for the gas prices and and all this shit they use covid to get cover for their the fucked up economy like that's that's just they always have a cover and then if you notice anything you're uh you're 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 loaded with a bunch of like right wing social values or whatever like oh you're one of them <clears throat> yeah that shit is insane man I don't get that shit I don't get that at all like it's this like the gas thing like what was it the the dirt bag left people were like uh oh this this is uh they were being sarcastic I three levels of irony or whatever of like oh you know uh this will teach the uh, the racist white working class. Uh, we're punishing the big truck them with drivers. The high gas prices or whatever. <laughs> yeah, are they just the are, truckers? Are they just like saying things that they like one hundred percent like sincerely three levels, believe? As it's yeah. three levels of irony. So it's, it's the it's the you know that the other guy that does that. Like you know, it's just like oh, am I being ironic? I'm like oh yeah, I'm kind of am, but I also kind of kind of mean it. And it's just to the point where it's not really saying anything, but like. And it's just funny. It's just like, yeah, black people don't use gas. Uh, Mexican people don't use gas. Like nobody uses gas, but working white people like this shit is fucking insane. Like I just, yeah, it's just, it's yeah. I don't know. I, I still remember. I still remember like uh, uh, back in the dark ages of me being online, uh, which, you know, I'm like never, I'm never on Twitter on the pod account ever, you know, but like uh, <laughs> back in those dark ages, um, you know, arguing with somebody about like how it's bad that school lunches aren't being provided <laughs> because of supply issues. And like, no. just, yeah, and just like anarchists just being like, oh, they're not getting their little chicken nuggies. Like, oh, boy who uh, cares oh my <laughs> like, god holy oh, shit no oh one's I just god. again like my favorite like just like no one is making you say these things <laughs> like you're volunteering this no like, you're you're owning the starving six-year-olds <laughs> i know dude <laughs> that alone yeah, the yeah. chuds their kids are starving yeah your parents should have voted right <laughs> Fucking little fucking hungry chud serves you right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no tendies for you, chud. <laughs> no, fucking blood libel uh, in tendies, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the state of how ridiculous things are gotten because it's just like oh gee i wonder why my uber eats price has gone up and it's like well no one's driving because gas is expensive and inflation is probably if we realistically measured it right like definitely double digits and mm, no yeah. one we have to make it completely political because oh my enemies are hurting so fuck them i'll, I'll, I'll just 
you know, bite the bullet and raise my nose. Like the worst one I've seen were like, and again, like what you're talking about with Twitter, that website is free. People just voluntarily say whatever the meanest, cringiest <laughs> yeah. shit that they want. And yeah. so it was just like, the, just a compilation of just like people in, in MAGA hats being like, I can't afford like $5 a gallon gas. Like this is the faces of who can't. And it's just like the reaction from like blue check marks and just these people, shit libs and whatever is basically just don't be poor like what is yeah, the most ridiculous yeah. position that we've gotten now where it's it's the inverse of what you would see maybe 20 years ago on like left versus right politics where yeah the the, the, the left complaint about the right would just be like you're just telling people not to be poor and mm-hmm. now it's the inverse it's the paris hilton energy yeah well, yeah, yeah. That meme. yeah. Well, i think funny i'm replying too. with that on twitter all the time <laughs> <laughs> it's funny too because it's like uh everybody has the like um uh, there's like this little this little like uh, struggle that a bunch of people engage in of being like, no, my faction represents the working class. No, my faction <laughs> presents the working class. Post boots, bro. Are you going to post pictures of your yeah, work boots? boots and like <laughs> all, all of this shit, like, you know, post post how many ribs are showing on your family members because they're so yeah. hungry. And yeah, like yeah. Uh, and then I love when things like this come up. It's like, OK, like. You know, we're going to abandon that for a moment. I mean, you're going to go back to it, right? Because you never you never abandon that just like slave logic of just like, no, I'm more deserving of complaining about the economy. Uh, but then, of course, you know, when you're when your enemy is talking about how they can't basically confirming, you know, uh, you know, I can't afford the gas prices, then, you know, it becomes you know, flip it around. This is just actually hilarious. Fuck them. Whatever. It's so yeah. bad, dude. It's well, they so did the, They did bad. that too with the trucker protests, both in Canada and here in the U.S. with the, the convoy or whatever. They're just like, look at these like really like a hundred thousand dollar rigs or whatever. These people clearly aren't working class. And I'm like, you know how much debt these people are probably in to have like their own enterprise. But, you mm-hmm. know, fuck them because it's an expensive like truck. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Pe- Petty Bourge. Petty Bourge. The uh, the the <laughs> connective tissue between truckers and fascism. Yo, I can't believe that shit happened. That's already it's coming <laughs> gone now. But like that, it's surreal saying this shit. You know, it's surreal. It feels like we made it up. You know, but. But it actually this, this literally feels like like the the Bernie bro stuff that we were talking about at the beginning of this show. This feels like a fever dream, like hyperbolic, uh, like world to confirm a lot of the like just like shit that we were talking about. Like like if you if you kind of if you said this stuff out loud, it's like, all right, like this is it's a bit much. You're playing yeah. it up a little bit. Yeah, that's what uh, I would think. No, nah, it's like fact is stranger than fiction kind of shit. Yeah. Uh, and the funniest part is that it's like the Bernie bros are the ones that are doing this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just miserable fucking subhuman leech people. Horrible. Yeah, like the I mean, last two years has kind of reminded me of like the Robin Williams skit that he did in 09 when Obama got elected. He's just like, try explaining this to somebody who just got out of a coma, like from the Clinton administration. And you're just basically trying to explain Bush, the wars, and then some black guy with a middle name Hussein got elected into the White House. And like that happened over the course, right, of like eight, 10 years. And the last two years you've had like COVID, basically the, an entire restructuring of the economy, wealth redistribution back to the wealthy. And and then trucker protests. Uh, we now have a war that's basically against Russia inside of Ukraine. And, um, you know, inflation's through the roof. And we may have global food shortages and famines throughout the Middle East and Africa. But, like, this has only happened in the last two years. Like, that's a fever dream to think about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Seriously, I was thinking about that, too, the other day. I was just like, yo, the rate of, I don't want to say collapse because people get upset about that word. But uh, not collapse. Uh, decline whatever yeah the rate of that is just fucking insane insane when you really step back and look at everything like what you just described uh it's pretty fucking mind mind boggling like how fast it's speeding up but uh but yeah i mean and the answers to it only get more ridiculous like what was it uh something from like the post or whatever where it was like people living in new york city like one in five women considering only fans to like support themselves and this oh is where God. I came up with this ridiculous idea to like start measuring decline, and it, it's called the Coombe Dex. So the, the number. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Hear me out. The autism checks out. It's just ba- I, I have two. You're, it's okay. You're going to get another one of these in just a minute when we talk about Ukraine. Um, but like the Coomdex is basically this idea of like, okay, if we can like start measuring the rate of like the price of goods, compare it to like the rate of women that are selling themselves online, and then how well that part of the economy is being stimulated by men, we can probably have a pretty good idea of how bad a situation is economically <laughs> and socially just by the number of people cooming on the internet. That's, that's the coom decks I've decided now when people are talking about, oh, I use OnlyFans to support myself. And I'm like, yep, this place declined. Write that down. Bro, <laughs> mental note. On to the Bro. next one. <laughs> I talked to some Zoomer girl. You know, I, I don't I've, I've, I don't really hang around Zoomers, you know, except for COH. But uh, but then, uh, you know, I, there's one one guy who's like brought some Zoomer girl around and then she just like, man, I don't know, man. It's like all my stereotypes of what a Zoomer is were just like in front of me. And I was like, man, I really <laughs> thought this was memes, man. I thought it was just memes. I didn't think like the ADD and like the man and just like oh, yeah, dude, people fans. like aren't even normal in this generation, like for real. I'm just yeah. like, like really just like picking through scraps of trying to find normalish people to be around. Like just people that just aren't fucking crazy afflicted are, are yeah. affected by all of this. And it's like, it's impossible. Everyone's got some sort of weird like fucking thing. Uh, and especially if you're a Zoomer, you've been like, you've been given some time over the past year and a half in a formative time uh, just to kind of settle into whatever your weird bullshit is. And just yeah. kind of be reaffirmed by it by weird online clicks, and so it just kind of like spirals out of control. Yeah, man, I, I, I would not want to be a, a Zuba right now. I would not want to be like in high school or whatever. But like, yeah, just the ADD and the fucking. And she just mentioned the OnlyFans that she's doing OnlyFans just so casually, and I just like, man, I felt trad for a second. I was like, yo, what the fuck? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> dude, like, dude, fucking <laughs> Koofy just appears on your head. <laughs> 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 and and that's the thing, right? Is, is that this whole like coof shit has basically just eradicated any sense of normal socialization, whether it's on webcams for school or no college, and then masks. Mm-hmm. You have been totally deracinated from what it means to be like a, a sociable human being. So like right. meeting people and talking to them and just being like the the all the memes, the the zoomer perm, the the for real for real no cap shit, all of that's real. <laughs> and I'm just thinking to myself, and I live in the middle of nowhere, like the closest like town with a school is like 700 people and the fact that these people who like ride fucking horses to like high school or the park are basically like yeah for real no cap or whatever and i'm just like hey okay we're we got to get out of here i gotta take you to church or something this is crazy Uh, and it's all and it's all real they're all nonchalant about it and now they're finally just getting back into school like regular people and uh, it's too late like the damage is done yeah, they're hopping off their horses and doing Fortnite dances. Basically, bro, I was yeah. talking. I was talking to somebody that I know who works in education, and they were looking for. They were having a hard time finding a gig with a school district that was remote, um, and they were like getting really like frustrated about it. And I'm like talking to them, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, like it makes sense though if you think about it. Like, you know, for real, for real, no cap, no, like, because, <laughs> because, like, right, uh, you know, because, because, Pete, because parents really, I mean, because, because remote learning really like didn't work very well. And this person is like, I shit you not, is like, what? What are you talking about? And I'm like, it just, it's been a disaster, right? Like, it's just a mental health care crisis for for children between that and like masks. And they're like, what are you talking about masks? Like, I, th- I thought all this was was great. I, I, I mean, I want a remote job just because like it's more comfortable for me. And like, I can just sit in my living room with sweatpants on with my laptop on the coffee table. Like, this is great. Like, I thought this is great for kids. I'm like, you have fucking no idea what you're talking about, do you? And like, no. I, I like went through the whole thing and it was this like, you ever have that like moment where you're like talking about like a societal woe and then you get halfway through it and you're like, oh, I'm literally like saying this to someone who's like responsible for this. For Ill. that woe. Yes. So like, I'm going to, I'm going to like, I'm going to like, I'm going to retract the fangs a little bit here and just try to change the subject as soon as I can. Cause I'm like, I'm like talking to a fucking mongoloid right now. <laughs> Um, it was horrifying, dude. And like, I just realized, like, I've been thinking a lot this last week just about how like so 
so many, I don't even know if I am going to go so far as to say they're all like elite institutions, but so many like seemingly elite institutions are just like make work programs and like Mm -hmm. talking to somebody Mm -hmm. that I know that is close to me who works in education, who was just like, it's such fucking bullshit that I'm having remote work taken away from me. And then you tell them like, no, this is like ruining children's (laughs) mental health. And they just like had no fucking idea what I was talking about. It like it (laughs) it was really it was like it was really unnerving to be honest and no, like, yeah for God, sure it, dude, it was i mean horrible. did they not remember being like uh did they did they live a normal life do they not remember being fucking kids i mean i hated school obviously and you know i didn't like any of that shit but i mean you cut you need to fucking do that shit you need to be mm-hmm. there you need to be around other kids you need to fucking get the microcosm of what the uh, uh like society is like you need that shit you know even if it's not pleasant like you gotta fucking experience it like you can't be in a fucking you can't be the bubble boy like what yeah. the fuck is these people are weird man this shit is weird i mean look the remote thing like honestly like i might prefer that because like you know well i'm getting older like if you're getting older and you're like i just don't like people in general right so that works for me but like that's not a good model for like society at large you know what i mean especially and you're not kids. a school teacher bro well exactly yeah. exactly like your your work life isn't like uh directly it doesn't have like a one-to-one connection to like the health of your community like you're just yeah you're just a dude you know what i mean like like uh, yeah. like like working for i mean because again it's like uh, on a certain level it's like it's like this person wanting this it's like yeah you're just like you're just a worker and you want to like have the more cush gig that's easier and nicer that makes sense but like yeah. you know you're you're not just some like you're not just some like desk jockey who's doing some random thing like you're you're educating the future children you know what i mean like yeah. it's it's insane yeah it's insane but like but it it literally isn't about that it literally isn't about that it's about I don't even know, man. Oh, I like he's I, a teacher. This guy's a teacher. This guy you're talking to. Uh not a guy, but but yeah, like uh I mean, yeah, it's education, right? So it's a woman. But uh, uh <laughs> but uh, like yeah, uh, dude. I mean I, I also I also think like the amount of like the amount of like moral laundering in just like any industry, like usually like private business, but the amount of moral laundering, like, you know, we always hear about it with like fucking representation and, and, and all of that shit. I think that people really have like internalized that shit. And so like, these are people that will like go into education um, for this vague notion of like, this is a, uh, like a net good for society and yeah. then just not actually like conduct themselves and lead their lives in a way that actually considers or, or like centers that in their lives at all. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just kind of like the vague, like I'm doing the good person job. Yes. No, uh, and no actual connection between the stated purpose and their actions. And that's like so many people. Well, yeah, I think this it, has a lot to do with the, the socialization, like of where, where we've been for the last a while. And this is where I'll insert maybe the, the right wing opinion on of some of this. But it's just like consider how rampant and I think even a lot of people on the left are kind of noticing this, too. Just like the rampant antinatalism that comes into our, our society. Like if you have no rooted connection to children or family or you're just tirely misanthropic about kids, but you want to be a part of this job. And I see this a lot nowadays, too, with people my age, like I'm 26 and people are beginning to teach with no kids, no desire to have family. And it's just like, how are you going to be able to instill values or like you're the second biggest aspect of socialization behind parents? Like Mm -hmm. you're going to have just as big of an impact. But if you have no desire to like want or have or really relate to these kids, you're going to be talking at them in a way that's not a way to instill a mentorship or connection. Like the best teachers I've had were parents. And I think that that does play a big role into it. And when we are now living in this society where it's just like, yeah, we we can put that off or we don't need to. Let's focus on the career. Let's do this thing because it's the good thing. I I do think that that plays a a big role in how we interact with children or interact with people that want to have families. Because it's just like these people are what comes next and you kind of can't fuck them up that way just because you want to lecture at them or come out in front of them on camera like that's a that's not the way to go i mean these people think that what comes next is just like is just like catastrophe and yeah, like yeah, yeah. i mean like like <laughs> like i, I like what, what i want is i want to like take a poll of how many fucking public school teachers uh, would support just like euthanizing uh, children to uh, to keep them from the horrors of like catastrophic climate change and, and catastrophe. Shit. Like, <laughs> like I I bet you. I mean, again, I'm not going to claim it's anywhere near a majority, but I bet you it would be like 
an insane number. It, it would be statistically significant. And then this it, is the yeah. thing, right? Is is that we talk about the civic religion or whatnot. I think this is what really divides things is that there's sort of a, 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 a teleological aspect to it. Like there's uh, sort of this like liberal eschatology where it's just in order yeah. to keep the, the system going, right? Of getting people on your side, getting people worked up about things. Um, the end is always near, which is why, you know, climate change right. is something from like 50 years to 20 to seven or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and to a point now where other issues kind of play into this eschatology, where all these varying groups are fighting for what's the end of the world to them. Like, this is how right. you get Noam Chomsky uh, getting yelled at by, who was it, like Simone Sanders or whatever, one of Bernie's old guys on that podcast, where yeah. he's talking about climate change. Like, well, don't you want your grandchildren to, like, not drown? And they were like, <laughs> no, we want our kids to stop being shot by racist cops. And everyone's <laughs> fine. For their, they're all fighting for their end of the world, and they're all fighting for how the end times are going to come so none of that fucking matters and yet the world is still rolling um, Dude, the, I mean, the year is <laughs> the year is 2045 you're hiding in your house as the police roll through asking everyone to come outside to receive their mandatory bullet in the brain <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude it, it's it's absurd <laughs> it's so absurd man yeah that, that, you know i would imagine if you're gonna teach I would imagine you'd want to have kids, but I guess, yeah, I guess I never thought about that. I guess if you're teaching and you don't want to have kids or you think the world's about to end in 10, 20 years because of climate change, like that's, yeah, that is kind of a weird uh, mm -hmm. outlook to have when you're like talking to the future, basically. <laughs> you're I mean, talking shit. to the future. I know people that teach specifically because they like, they don't want to have the responsibility of having a kid, but they still want to like be in kids' lives. Yeah, right. children. Still, like, they I mean, want to be like the uncle or like the 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 aunt or whatever. The cool it, that aunt just or whatever comes yeah. in and out of people's lives, but they want to do that like as a teacher rather than like the aunt. Um, no changing diapers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, yeah I mean, you know, women can be whoever they want to be. They just yeah. they just so many of them <laughs> independently end up wanting to be around kids still for some reason. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. All those maternal instincts you have while you're in your twenties <laughs> and thirties. But that's the other thing too, right? Is this that this is also kind of part of the psyop thing where you see all the, the occasional article pop out where uh, a millennial or gen or older Gen Z couple are pictured smiling and they're like, "Well, we're not having children." I got a vasectomy at 25 because i'm worried about climate change and i wouldn't want to birth a child into this like catastrophic like end of the world scenario and it's just like oh my god right like if you thought this through and of course they have because in their worldview this is it this is, we're in the end times now buddy and it's just insane to think about that you know society's probably going to keep going heaven forbid whatever happens on, on the other parts of the world right now but like Mm. Uh, you know, holy shit, this is your diehard belief. And you have people that are like, yeah, I got sterilized at like 20. And uh, even me and all my traditionalist opinions, I'm just like, this should raise the alarm for any sane person, even if you don't agree with me. <laughs> yeah, you literally know, no like, one, no one under the age of 30 should like legally be allowed to sterilize themselves. <laughs> yeah. Like a vasectomy of like a 21 year old, like a 20 year old man is, 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 is immoral on the doctor's part. Yeah. I actually, I know someone who did that and I was just like, damn man, like I don't want to have kids. And even I think that's kind of extreme. Like what the fuck? Like I don't, how, how do you know what you're going to think in like five, 10 years? How do you know that? Like, I don't know that. Like, well, how can you be so certain? That's, but whatever. That's, yeah. That's 100% it. Like right there. And that's always yeah. been my like defense. It's just like, it's just like, this is like a big thing, dude. Like, like, uh, <laughs> fucking, I'm a completely different person than who I was six years ago. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just wild, dude. It's just I mean, wild. people give like women crap for like baby fever, but men are the exact same way. Like if you were to ask 21 year old me what my thoughts were on like marriage or having children, I would have told you like, fuck no. I'm going to like, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to do any of that. Like we're just going to be me. Um, and but like now, like I'm 26 and I have a new lease on life and I'm just like, nope, no, we, we want like, I want a wife. I want to have kids. I'm like looking into buying land, like fuck all of this old you know i'm just gonna do me bullshit like people change their minds like mm -hmm. it's very real that men also have paternal instincts and when you want to do this because you want your cummies without any of the consequences <laughs> like are you serious you have no idea what you're gonna be thinking about five years later and like i'm on anti-rejection medication that fucks with my fertility like i know exactly how serious this is but like everyone else is just like nah man i want to nut like without any guilt or like any like consequences <laughs> and it's just like here we are like the most basic 
senseless atavistic he- uh, hedonism that we could possibly get to. Yep. Yeah, I want that for me, but uh, not for anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> not for it's anybody not else. For others, like, it's, it's cool not right for me, for but yeah, for everybody, like it's going to cause a problem for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, you know, when you're talking about like that that mentality of like the the, the apocalypse, like I mean, people people on the right make this apt uh, uh, comparison of like the liberal like ideology being like a religion or whatever like yeah that that end time shit that book of revelation shit we're gonna get flooded like it really is like very it's very religious in nature and i was wondering have you guys seen we i don't slouch seen first reformed have you have you uh mm-hmm. i was thinking about that last night not reformed? no it's a good movie it's a good movie uh slav you've seen it right yeah i was i i was like for whatever reason i went down the rabbit hole and i was like thinking about it last night that's weird you're talking about it well, it's weird. Well, now whenever someone talks about like climate apocalypse, I think of that guy. There's basically a character at the beginning who's like his wife is pregnant and uh, he's like, we got to abort it because and he's very religious. He's like, we got to abort because I can't bring a kid into this fucking world, this climate change world. And he's got like mad maps and graphs of like how bad the environment's changing and like the timeline of how how soon it'll be like a disaster for like a humanitarian crisis and all that. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, fu- he's like, you know, he's black filled. He's, he's gone all the way. And this uh, Ethan Hawke has to like, kind of like, who's a Catholic him priest. Out of it. Yeah, he's a priest. He's kind of like coaxing him out of it. But he's like, he's like, shit, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of hard to respond to what he's saying. Well, and but, he uh, radicalizes him, and then that's, yeah, yeah, and then exactly. he finds the guy's. Uh, well, let's bomb. not spoil it. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, it's yeah, like the yeah. first act. It sets up the movie. Yeah, yeah. True. True. Yeah. But you're right. You're right. I won't say. But. Uh, but yeah, what's funny is Paul Schrader, who wrote that, who I love, you know, but he fucking, he, he actually believes that shit. He's in interviews saying like, yeah, the boomers ruined uh, the world uh, for the for the next generation. Uh, everyone's going to die from climate disaster. Like he genuinely believes it. It's not a character. Like he believes that. So it's fucking, it's fucking weird. But it's uh, funny that he like, he like, he kind of, but like the movie ha- like present, like posits like a solution to it in the end you know what i mean like with like like his own struggle with it yeah Uh, yeah well just like i mean what i now i can't spoil the ending or whatever but no 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 uh it it is funny i mean yeah like schrader's a fucking boomer but i mean what are you gonna do yeah Yeah. he should watch watch his own movie (laughs) (laughs) well i think when you're talking about the end times right or when people get very uppity about like end of the world type of scenarios they're also incredibly reckless about it like there's this nihilistic i don't give a shit if i die anymore kind of deal like you take a look at what's happening in in ukraine and you're seeing these like blue check mark shit lib article op-ed pieces where it's just like nuclear war is not the end of the world or like it'll be really bad for society but the human race will go on and it's like what the fuck are you talking about like you live in a city you urbanite journalist like you're the first to get fucked and maybe it's a death wish that they're slowly supplanting out here they're like ah yes let's end the world because i can finally kill myself without the guilt or courage to do it myself Mm -hmm. right it's an end to like the never-ending like and meaningless merry-go-round that they live in it kind of it kind of reminds me of uh there was like a post i saw the other day of some fucking music festival with these anti-natalists protesting it and it's they just have big signs that are like fucking stop having kids uh and like you see that and you know it's fucking you know it's like curated by the fucking uh you know by by the uh God damn it. I'm like forgetting the f- the algorithm. I'm forgetting Internet words already. Uh, fucking. <laughs> That's good. For you. To you. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that one, to be honest. Soon the um, internet will be repulsive to you. Yeah, the, the, it's like it's specially curated by the algorithm to just like, you know, get get your blood boiling. And I like kind of scroll down. I'm looking at some of the replies and somebody's just like, yeah, I don't really mind this, honestly, because it just means these are the people that aren't going to be having children. Uh, and like, I definitely come down on that. You know what I mean? Of like, you know, these like these absolute psycho fucking columnists on, you know, that are that are doing a part time job on OnlyFans that are saying this is like horrifying, horrible shit. Um, yeah, I mean, like, just keep believing that. I mean, I, maybe don't believe that if you're going to continue to like vote and like engage in trying to steer this ship that we're all on and write articles and shit and hold. Yeah, media well, job all right, I'm actively editing what I'm saying, but <laughs> I, I feel a little a little bit better about it, knowing that like they're not going to, you know, be sending a team into the next uh, into the next season. Their curse is fun will never grace the face of this earth. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I guess I guess that's the that's the flaw of, of, of the whole education thing we were talking about. So I don't know. I don't know what the it fuck does. I'm it does about. go back to the last time that I was on where we were talking about like the material in, in the spiritual, because like mm. if you're spiritually like dead inside or if you're like political theology, right, to take a little bit of Schmidt is just like, yeah, fuck it. Um, let everything go. My life's meaningless. So I'm going to write this op ed about why you shouldn't have children and why nuclear war is good, actually, and why that's a good thing. <laughs> then yeah maybe you're spiritually bankrupt and i don't want you having any control near the levers of power or writing op-eds to manufacture consent like it, it, i don't know maybe it's the fact that we're that spiritually empty and your whole ideology is just like yep hedonism good but oh my god my life is meaningless like no one holds a mirror to themselves anymore i mean that's like that's like a mechanically broken person like yeah. it, 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 like there it's like like for somebody to be able to overcome that kind of code that's running behind their eyes uh would like really probably take like a really high level of intellectual vigor to like understand like every every bit of my body is like leading me towards like just a nihilistic way of conducting myself but i understand on a higher level above that and like the amount of people that would actually uh, act in that way are like so few. I'm saying I'm just saying personality tests for voting. That's what we do, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your Briggs, uh, my, your Meyer Briggs. We need yeah, your your Meyer Briggs, and that definitely won't backfire and turn into you know, did you or did you not enjoy seeing Stacey Abrams on the finale of Star Trek? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what's what's interesting is. Uh, you know, at least with the old religions, like there's like, uh, all right, there's end times coming. Like, I better get right. You know, I did a lot of bad shit. I better fucking clean up and be presentable uh, for for the for the rapture or whatever. But uh, this version of it is 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 not like that. No, there's no darker. afterlife. So it's just like, all right, well, if this is it, you know, then we better live it up right now. YOLO, because this is this is it. Like we're we're done after this. So might as well be as hedonistic as possible, which in my mind, yeah, it's, it's the perfect uh, conditions for for consumerism, for hyper consumerism, and and uh, and just yeah, just that hedonistic type of uh, of lifestyle. Uh, and yeah, just again, like all the stuff you guys say too is just like yeah, just uh, no collectivism. It's just like you know, w what am I gonna do for me in the short term? It's the perfect, uh, perfect uh, consumer subject. Well, that's sort uh, of the the nice to to touch on the old religion. Like that's the nice part about Lent, at least within like the lens of Orthodox Christianity, because that's what that's the church I attend I'm with a small mm. OCA parish. And like you know, you're you're not supposed to eat cheese or any dairy products. You've got your fish, but no meat, and it's a Lenten diet for like one meal a day. And it's just you're in this hunger that you eventually overcome. Um, the, the, the hunger pangs kind of disappear here it does bring you closer to a sense of appreciating what's out there especially for people that do live in this environment of everything is at your fingertips and something that um, mm. my priest had really made a point about is like we live in a world now where at a click of a button you have access to everything especially in the west mm. yeah. and it's just like the the purpose of this fast only in, in preparation for the celebration of like the resurrection of christ is also just because you know eastern christianity right has a very um you know the hecaism aspect of it like through divine energy one can get closer to you know being closer to god and like that's a nice part about it the old religion because there is the benefit that there is something after um but you, you i think you nailed it on the head this whole yolo shit where it's just like you have nothing else to look forward to and then everyone thinks that right until usually two things or three things you have a child you have a near-death experience or um you're getting old yourself and you're starting to confront your mortality and like for me a lot of my big changes did come with like oh shit like i you know you can almost die uh that, that happened with me with like the kidney failure and it's just like okay Okay, um, I should probably get right with a couple of things before heaven forbid this like goes goes south. And that, that, that's what helps. But most people don't have that because we live now in a world of like complete material comfort. Um, anything that we need to address the minor, the smallest of inconveniences can easily be addressed by like an Amazon purchase in, in, in a second on your phone or by someone else taking care of it for you. Like it, it does really illustrate, I think, some of the 
the bankruptcy about it because when we stop motivating ourselves, and this isn't just purely religious, but it does help. Um, if you stop motivating yourself, either A, for the life that comes after or B, for the benefit of the next generation, which is where we had that conversation about antinatalism. Uh, like, yeah, like things are going to get really bad really quickly. Like when you start making these things optional, um, you're putting up for, you know, debate about these like primal aspects of civilization. And once something's up for debate, you usually don't get it back. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, that's totally true. Um, and you know, I, I personally, yeah, I'm not religious, but like, you know, for me, it's just like, all right, uh, there's more than, than, there's more than just myself. You know what I mean? Like there's just reality. Like there's other people in the fucking world that like my family too. Like if I'm not right, if I'm not like, if I live hedonistically and have that mentality, I'd be fucking over people in my family. I would eventually, because eventually I'd burn out of money and fucking just be a liability to people. So if I'm not together and in order, then then you're a liability on other people. So like that's you know I think I think uh, you know that's that's one way too of just being like yo you, you can't have you can't walk around with that mentality because uh, yeah and again. We know why they want you to think that way anyways. We know why <laughs> they yeah. want to, they want you to buy shit. Like, obviously like that's what it's, that's what it's for. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's why family is another, uh, a key, uh, co- like mini collectivist link is like, if they can break that off, then, uh, then what are you really tethered to? You know, so you can live in your story living Disney home. Yeah. Like it's yeah, just, yeah. it's, oh, it's, it just makes me sick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like you literally reinvented the company town and you're going to say yes, because it's got, you know, X, Y, Z character from whatever franchise <laughs> you're watching. Ears. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey Mouse ears, company town. Um, and, and instead of mining coal, you're mining for Funko Pops or something. If it's really so sinister, then why did Disney just, you know, feature their first lesbian kiss on film? I mean, you can't <laughs> tell me that that's bad. Oh, you know, like every other big first gay moment for Disney where they can right. easily edit it out for like the Middle East and Russia and Africa. Yeah. <laughs> China. Yeah, China too. Dude, I'm really looking forward to that uh that new Disney movie. I'm definitely gonna be watching the Chinese cut personally, but uh, <laughs> just for personal reasons, you know. So what so yeah, we should we should switch gears to the uh to to the rest of the world. Uh so yeah, it's yeah. been a good hour. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I honestly, I've sort of uh, personally kind of tuned out a lot of, oh, shit, CEO, she's got to go. I forgot. Yeah, I got a dip. Uh, but yeah. I, it was good talking while we could, Prudentialist, and y'all keep going, obviously. Oh, yeah, it was sure. good chatting with you, man. For sure. Peace. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I've sort of tuned out a lot of what's going on. Um, I don't know. I mean, you mentioned like a call for for uh, nuclear war in an article. Did that actually happen? Like, did that actually? No, there have been a lot of articles as of late that have talked about like our nuclear weapons discourse has gotten so reckless. And I wonder how much of this is because you don't have like the Cold War warriors that are there in, mm-hmm. in those positions, like they've aged out or retired or whatever. Like mm-hmm. we have conversations like in, in Congress, right? Like I think it was the, the House um, like d- Defense Committee or whatever had a lot of generals on 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 in congress for a hearing and they were like well can we win like a strategic nuclear exchange um you know we should we should preemptively strike like what are our capabilities and it's just a very weird thing to hear where we know what that is right like or we should at least in the back of our minds like people in the cold war grew up with like threads the day after um by the dawn's early light and of course dr strange love and like what is the closest thing that we have to that we don't have anything right like there's that fear of what these weapons can do which i are very real and to me like that's yeah. why as a kid like the scariest like even to this day i'm 26 like the scariest movie i have ever seen was going to the los alamos test site and they have like a small little theater in there talking about the history of nuclear weapons testing and it's just like why are we being so reckless with like these very much like nation leveling millions are going to die kind of weapons that we have thousands of pointed at the rest of the world. Like that's a very dangerous thing. And like, that's something that I think it should be concerning anybody. Like that's not a political issue anymore. It's just like, 
hey, your leadership, your elites are openly talking about, you know, destroying basically the world as you know it. Uh, you should probably be hoping for some diplomacy or something here. That, that That's one concern I've got. And then the second thing is, is that mm. you, you've watched all this like sanction stuff and this like banning and putting, you know, prices have skyrocketed through the roof on things that matter. And so like I cover, you know, international relations and shit. So like my focus hasn't been on the day to day, like how how is the war going? Because I don't want to be reporting on things that are going to be propaganda faked or debunked Same. like six hours yeah. later. Yeah. I've been focusing on like the second order effects. So like mm. what are the second order effects? It's just like, well, prices of wheat have skyrocketed through the roof. And right. um, the United Nations food program that helps feed like millions of Africans, most of their wheat comes from Russia and Ukraine. that are some of the most fertile parts of the world for wheat growth. Huh. And it's just like, oh shit, you know, like let's take, not, not to use the term third world, but like let's take some of the poorest, most least developed countries on earth that have a shit ton of weapons and a shit ton of ethnic problems with these drawn up colonial borders and mm. now we're basically going to tell them okay good luck growing your own food <laughs> not only are you going to see famine you're going to see migration issues and you're going to see a bunch of ethnic conflicts break out all over the continent oh, yep. and like that's yep. a huge issue like egypt is one of the biggest importers of russian wheat for example and they're probably wondering what the hell's going to happen next because they've only got a eight months or so of reserves according to an egyptian um subscriber of mine and he was explaining to me like yeah we're, we're, we're trying to bid it out and figure out how we're going to get it but like you know they're neighbor ethiopia which is also fighting a civil war right now they just right. turned on this dam that could potentially affect the flow of the nile river to egypt so that's a huge national security concern because of course the nile is the carotid artery of the country so like you might see a war break out there and it's just like is anyone thinking about these second order effects or you know when it comes to malice or stupidity you know that that makes me worry so these so are what, these are the, these are the things to be concerned about so what you're saying is that putler is killing black folks <laughs> oh, I'm sure we'll get that op-ed in like a week. <laughs> he, he killing all them blacks. <laughs> yeah, the, well, I mean, uh, when that uh, those issues arise in, in Africa, uh, you know, all those issues you're talking about with the migration crisis and, and ethnic conflict, I'm sure uh, they can just pin that to climate change because that's, oh, exactly. yeah, that's something they've said uh, for a while is going to happen is, oh, as things get scarce and climate change gets worsened, uh, you're going to see uh, you're going to see conflict. climate refugees or whatever. Refugees, and it's just yeah. like, I think I tweeted that out the other day where it's just like, man, I can't, I, I looked at that uh, UN food program where they get their wheat from. And it's just like, man, I can't wait for climate refugees because of climate change to yeah, come yeah, up to, yeah. you know, throughout the world. <laughs> like, here we go. And that's the thing. It's like, what was it like three or four months ago? It was like the climate czar or whatever, John Kerry. Um, he was just like, yeah, like you haven't seen anything yet until like a million climate refugees are at your door. And it's just like, oh, well, that feels all kind of conspicuously timed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a big Ponzi scheme. They're 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 just uh, transferring problems. They're transferring this uh, this inflation problem. You know, they're transferring. Well, COVID, uh, the bailouts caused the inflation. I'm sure it was like a huge chunk of that. And then they're transferring that over to Russia. And then they'll transfer this this weed problem that's going to come from that to uh, to climate change. It's a big fucking uh, Ponzi scheme of uh, of excuses. Yeah, it's a good juggling and, act. And I mean, yeah. even Biden in his addresses about this, uh, the, on the, the war was just like the cost of gas is explicitly Putin's fault. And it's just like the price of gas was rising up ever since you took office. Like right. there was a great thing in November of 2021 where like the Democrats official Twitter account or something had put out a, uh, a, a graph that was just like, oh, uh, gas went down five cents. Thank you, Biden. And it's just like it's still in like the 350s, 360s for on average. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. just like, oh, my God. <laughs> I saw somebody posting like a gas pump that was like, yeah, it was like 90 bucks or just like insane prices, seven bucks. I don't know if they're, they're all real, but like, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's funny. It's funny this uh, memory holding and like, I mean, this is the function of the media is to uh, to memory hole selectively <clears throat> to bring things into the for uh, you know, the foreground and the background. And yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just funny that they'll, um, they're gonna, they're gonna act like a uh, Putin is the source of this when we were talking about this shit a year ago, weren't we? Like, you know, what was yeah. that Thanksgiving thing where they were like, oh, the price of Thanksgiving went down by 50 16 cents. 16 cents. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they were struggling with that. Like, they, they Dude, were doing it was like so, That was metal. such a weird fucking post, too. Like, yeah. it was it was just like, it was, <laughs> it was all these, like, arranged, like, little, like, hamburger 
and like <laughs> like a liter of cola and like it, it's oh uh, it was like creepy like no it was, was the fourth of july one that they had it, or it was like yes. 16 oh, yeah. but they had the serving plate of like craft cheese slices that were folded it's like you people have no idea what regular people are like <laughs> this is what humanoids eat right yeah, yeah have you seen that mid romney eating a hot dog thing yeah <laughs> yo that shit tripped me out slav you didn't see it right nah dude does he just like does he just does he just deep throat it in one go or what <laughs> I mean, is this glizzy. like a mormon thing i don't know what's going on no the soil lord uh had posted it, it was just like somebody's like asking him at the baseball field like and he's like this is a hot dog this is my uh favorite meat i like it. <laughs> <laughs> he just sounds like a fucking alien and noticeably does not take a bite while it's recording which is very you know you draw your own conclusions he's a <laughs> sure well because it doesn't have ground white children in the frank so he's like i'm I'm There's no adrenochrome that. in the hot dog. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Cannot eat. This is a little bit of a yellowed adrenochrome. Uh, I, I mean Dijon mustard. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that Yo. what these fucking proles eat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. These people are sick. Oh, I come but, here, Mr. President. We have to fill you full of nootropics before you get on to <laughs> the, the teleprompter. Yeah. They've all they've all got like a plug in the back of their neck, like fucking the Matrix, and they just like it just like shoot them full of uh, uh, nutritional uh fluid <laughs> yeah that's that's definitely how it is but uh umbilical cords and all mechanical umbilicals and all that yeah yeah but i know the, a guy it's who the confirms. fakest it's the fakest shit right where you have that like conference center that they have right where it's this like mini sort of white house looking oval office thing that's just basically an amphitheater <laughs> where they do things they yeah. and all and the screens <laughs> of course are digital and everything that we're yeah. seeing now with the the conflict in ukraine it's just like we are now completely fighting a war in the desert of the real like everything is digital now <laughs> everything is the simulacra where everything is just we have sitting congressmen who are retweeting fucking sam hyde ghost of kiev memes um what cnn had to put out a correction uh saying hey this like viral meme making fun of vosh as the kitty finder of kharkiv uh is not real by the way i mean we we live in a world where it's just completely mimetic at this point and no one unless you live there is probably going to have an accurate idea of what the hell's going on that's what i've been saying man because i'm just like I can't really call it. I can't really. I don't. I'm. I'm very hesitant to talk too much about it because I'm like, all right, this is a huge fog of war and there's like propaganda and all that. It's it's hard to like. Yeah, that that goes to that Sam Hyde thing, like being on the news. Like that was on the news, right? Yeah, Tucker Carlson called out um, Adam Kissinger, uh, the the Republican that voted to impeach Trump. Um, like, no, this guy's from Million Dollar Extreme. Sam Hyde is a comedian, not a fighter jet oh. pilot. Like, it, it was very much real. <laughs> <laughs> dude i love that crazy. i love that shit so much dude it's like uh i love it though because it's like the fog of war except it's like no longer just limited to wartime it's just reality now um yeah it's a pretty good time yeah, man. exactly it's the fog it's just the the everlasting fog yeah the fog but, of war but like it's also like just the fog of hyper reality like that's exactly yeah. what we're living in right now is like yeah. you have to peel back three layers of irony and then like dig through whatever gets written in a meme to maybe find a source to have a rudimentary understanding of whatever the hell is going on and it's just like yeah that's western discourse everybody rationalists on suicide watch let's go boys <laughs> <laughs> let's fucking go dude. whatever stops I- the rationalist to satanist pipeline i'm all for it <laughs> <laughs> dude i saw i saw that post the other day and like i i i i can't speak to it that much but for whatever reason i like know exactly what that's talking about i i know exactly what i had a co-worker who was like a self-described satanist um and like it's it's basically like it's basically like how i and listen i mean we've had people on the show that i really like who are libertarians you know i have friends that are libertarians but i mean it's basically just like libertarianism where where it's 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 basically like the actual form of like just radical liberalism uh that's just that's just all i hear when i think someone talking about like someone saying that they're a satanist well, maybe uh, to to give some defense to the libertarians, because I know quite a few that would be like, well, that ain't us. I, I think sure. Murray Rothbard had coined the perfect term for it. He, he called them modal libertarians, M-O-D-A-L, <laughs> where it's just like, no, these people hate their parents, hate the church. 
and they really just want to do what they want to, to smoke weed and have their cummies and not worry about anything. And, th- th- and they'll just call themselves a libertarian because they're against the state or whatever. And it's just like, no, this is just radical hedonism. It has nothing to do with like the, the Lou Rockwell or the Pat Buchanan types that are like calling themselves like libertarians or paleocons. Sure. And that's where we're at now. It's just like it's pure modal hedonism. Um, and it's just like ridiculous. See, I would honestly just like paint liberalism with that brush too but probably yeah that's pretty fair but yeah i mean okay wait 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 okay he, so he identifies as a satanist uh yeah so what's he, he believe well wait, i mean wait, okay wait. all right all right all right wait wait we, hold on hold on wait we, wait, wait. We, we, we gotta, <laughs> does, he have does he have like uh, a lot of piercings and like no no uh the, w- like what we got what we got to acknowledge here is that like i mean you know i was kind of saying it in like an ideological way. But then also, if you like look at like the church of Satanism or whatever in the United States that have that fucking cringe little like Baphomet statue and everything, um, which is a side note, I like saw a picture of the other day and like, it's very funny that they like don't have the female breasts on Baphomet's chest. Uh, I wonder why that is. But anyways, uh, like they're basically just like left libertarians they just they just like they fund political activism uh for you know like personal autonomy basic line kind of uh political shit right um it's kind of like how like the church of the spaghetti monster or whatever isn't actually an earnest religion it's basically just like it's like a critique of religion like the, the 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 church of satanism is is basically just like a political activist group. Does that make sense? I, I think when you said uh, the, the, the brush thing, that was a pretty with liberalism like that. This is just liberation ideology cranked yeah. up to the max with a, a heavy dose of irony. Yeah, exactly. I, I, like this is the output you get when you have people that are just like so thoroughly steeped in just like suit in, in just like a, in liberalism and literally don't have the tools to articulate what that even means. Uh, and so they're just, it's just like these logical endpoints that are just absolutely insane. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I just assume if anybody says that they're Satanists, I just assume that they're, it's just a larve. You know what I mean? That's just my immediate assumption. So I didn't know that there's like a, I think it's post ironic. Like I think it's both. I think it's both. I don't, I don't think that, I think the mm-hmm. amount of people that actually worship Satan, um, I think the amount of people that actually worship Satan are probably very few, you know, in, in these groups. And and insofar as there are people that actually worship Satan, I think it's like religion generally where it's like kind of like a it's like a social mechanical thing. And so like and so like the Satan insofar as they worship it is basically just kind of like a subversive social icon that they use to like Prudentialist was just saying, like, just say, like, fuck you, dad. Uh, like they do worship Satan, but like Satan is kind of an icon that's filled with those things as opposed to them literally being like there's a little man there's a big man i picture satan being large in in hell and he's red and he's got horns and i literally think he's the best um (laughs) yeah i don't know how much people are like a literalist about it but gotcha but they but they get to that point functionally is what i'm saying right Um, right yeah interesting um but yeah i mean I don't know how we got here. <laughs> I think it's just the, the irony and the, 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 the irony aspect of it, right? Like you have to peel back all these layers of irony to get mm. where people are coming from. And, yeah. and this is where I just thought, well, like, how do you accurately, like with Ukraine, how do you like accurately um, measure what the hell is going on unless you're not there and discerning through like what Western uh, right. outlets are saying versus like what the Russian or pro-Russian side is saying. And I, and I came up with this humorous idea, and this is what I had suggested to you in this tweet. And here's your perfect thing for the intro. So I, I call this the cam girl index. And the idea is, is that we know that Eastern Europe has the propensity for Eastern European cam girls, primarily Slavics, but like Ukraine, especially it's a very high area of sex work and trafficking. So why not through like geolocation and, you know, internet activity, be able to trace how many active accounts of Ukrainian cam girls are currently live right now as sort of your baseline. And if we start seeing them go out, 
right? Like, oh, they're not, you know, they're not streaming anymore. They're not doing their titty stuff anymore on, on, on camera online. And there's not enough men paying for it. Okay, we know that there's potentially that city might be invaded or they might be getting shelled or whatever. So they're not online. And I'll then, volunteer to watch. I'll yeah, do right? <laughs> you, can, you can measure it. Everyone can tell if their Twitter account or something starts popping up saying like, oh, I'm in Luxembourg. I'm a Ukrainian. Like, please help me. Like, now we have an idea to tell how well the world war, war is going. Is we can right, just be right, able to right. use the cam girls to accurately see, okay, their IP address is in this city. They're not online anymore. Odds <laughs> are the Russians are there. I'm just saying this, is, this would work for someone who can – like if 4chan can find Shia LaBeouf's flag, right, with the whole he will not divide us someone can tell through the ukrainian cam girls just how well the invasion's going oh for sure for sure i i, th- I think you just you just gave uh uh you just gave the the mic another strategy for uh for observing uh atlantic uh, council i want my check please <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how good are things going if they can maintain their uh their running level of hedonism uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i didn't know that there's a lot of sex work out there i didn't i didn't know that it's interesting yeah it's one of the biggest places for like sex work and human trafficking and like eastern europe it's it's kind of depressing how much like sex tourism happens there oh so, yeah dude and you got fucking yeah. russian thought patrols <laughs> you, you guys have seen those videos i'm like busting in and arresting all these chicks uh no, i haven't seen that i've seen a oh few. yeah oh yeah dude they have like cam girl houses um yeah i thought yeah, tiktok they... houses were bad imagine the smell oh jesus <laughs> christ <laughs> <laughs> no one's taking the garbage out ever because it's just like <laughs> it's a bunch of just like messy millennial women posting nudes online jesus christ is it like idf girl propaganda type shit like it's like that like. oh okay so that actually that you know how they had that like blonde chick on she's apparently some ukrainian member of parliament and she was just like yeah i'll take up a gun i'll fight for the new world order and like this all got said out loud and it's like uh oh you said the quiet part out loud but they had her image cropped on uh when they showed her holding the gun and like blonde tits were basically sort of like propped up with a push-up bra or at least it looked like it but mm. it, the the thing was cropped at her legs and it's like gee i wonder why and then you see the full uncropped image and her bare feet are showing and they were just like oh. freshly painted nails and it's like ah okay and now i know why you cropped the image because this is clearly some like psyop horny posting yeah. stuff for some foot fetishists to be like yeah i'll defend <laughs> ukrainian feet against russia like here this is where we're at now like, it's idf girl level of bullshit dude imagine how Never go wrong with that. Imagine how many more freedom <laughs> fighters she would have inspired if she had just included the feet pics. <laughs> Dude, that's a, that's something that I kind of want to talk about is fucking is fucking uh, redditors going and fighting for Ukrainian. <laughs> Wait, what? So there's Wait, a whole you... subreddit oh. CRK about like so Ukraine has you can sign some paperwork and you can go and if you want to you can fight in sort of like a foreign legion forces uh, oh. for the Ukrainians. An emphasis and, on the paperwork because that's going to yeah. be very relevant later. <laughs> very relevant later, yeah. And so you can sign up and go and fight for i mean pay your own way but like you can bring your shit and just go and fight russians and there's a whole subreddit for it which again take this with a grain of salt because like reddit is like one of the top 10 sites on the internet that's trafficked and it's filled with psyops um but there's a whole subreddit for like volunteer for ukraine where people are asking questions and like talking about going or traveling to go fight russian soldiers uh in ukraine under the ukrainian flag while being like american british or whatever this is real yes yeah dude and you get all these fucking you get all these fucking pictures of like you know, fucking trannies going over there with their like AR 15s. The and... Tranissary Corps. <laughs> and no. It's a fucking nightmare, dude. Bro. And like, and so you see these, these posts being made of people being like, yeah, like, I mean, we're just like being like pushed to the front and like, you know, we're just like getting shelled or basically like meat shields. Uh, and uh, what was oh, the? I, saw I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, like a decent amount of these are fake. Uh, but you gotta kind of love like these posts that are like, hey, like I'm thinking about going to fight in the Ukraine, and I'm just like seeing that they have a really low vaccination rate, and I'm like really like scared about sure. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Yo. fucking funny, dude. But but a lot of these guys, like you said, they're signing. 
and like let's be real like i i imagine like this is like 99.9 percent fucking men uh just like lonely men with with no prospects um oh yeah they're, they're going over there and uh, the true revolutionary subject uh and, <laughs> i mean i say that as a joke but that's like just literally true uh <laughs> but like uh <laughs> I do. That's the real. That's the real data gathering. I want to see just like try to get a spread of just like how many like revolutionary men throughout history were actually sexually active uh, at the time <laughs> yeah, of that yeah, happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, man, they go over there, they sign these fucking contracts or whatever. Right. And then they fucking they go a wall. Uh, they get to the border. And especially if like you have your pack of shit with you. Uh The people just fucking turn you away, dude. And I think that I think that like this is like this is like Ukrainian state. I think it's also just like straight up like EU NGO people just being like, no, you can't go AWOL. We're like we're like bussing your ass back there. And then like a few people will like get out of the fucking country. And they're like they're like having the cops show up to like, you know, hotels they're staying in. I mean, this is like the 4chan post I saw like fucking, you know, cops showing up to the hotels and the hostels they're staying in and like dragging their asses out and sending them back to the war zones. <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> like these Man, people. I'm a <laughs> dude, and these people are basically like owned by the Ukrainian military for like 2 years. Bro, I'm imagining like fucking Stalingrad, like people turn, <laughs> they freak out at the front line. They, they only got a cartridge and they're like, they're turning around. Well, that's the back thing is, is that allegedly, allegedly that's the case. They're like, these people are going in and they don't have a lot of training and they gave them maybe like two or three magazines for their AK-47 <laughs> or whatever. And they're getting fucking obliterated. Don't come, man. And oh I think that's God. one part of it. And then the other part, and this is like the, of course, this is we're like, you know, covert, like, let's do what we're doing to Syria. Oh. Oh, a bunch of troopers from Britain's our military went AWOL and they went to Ukraine. It's like, did they really go AWOL or is this like covert shit that you're sending? But at the same time, take this with all the like, like with a grain of salt. Yeah. Apparently one of the like Legion bases or whatever got hit with a missile. And then there's like some American guy reporting and saying like all this crazy shit that's happening. And then someone did the research. And it's like, oh, this guy was with like the Boogaloo boys and was like instigating shit to get people arrested. And it's just like, how much can we trust? Yeah, right. So it, it's this like desert of the real stuff. But like there are people asking questions. It was funny that Slav mentioned the, the COVID your vaccination stuff because it was just like uh, apparently we updated in the on the U.S. government website our nuclear emergency response documents or like, you know, guidelines. And they were like, OK, so when you seek shelter in like a basement no or your bunker or whatever, way. they were like, be sure to say six feet apart. Um, <laughs> oh I'm gonna die of radiation poisoning, man. But oh thank God I'm boosted, God. and otherwise this would have been so much worse. Bro, you're running into the fucking shelter, and they're like checking your vax card. Like, oh, oh, no way. like, well, slow down. Can, can we have <laughs> Fallout Five start that way? You can't enter the vault tech vault unless you show your vax pass. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking dude! I'm Christ looking. Boy. I'm looking forward to recording uh, episode 102 of the Fed Post uh, 200 years from now as a fucking ghoul. <laughs> 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 Galaxy Man. News Radio, the Fed Post, <laughs> right? <laughs> Man, how do they juggle all these psyops, man? This shit is this shit is it's kind of impressive. It's kind of amazing that they can just like keep keep these things all in the air together. It's like yeah, any any mention of, of vaccine shit like w- with what's going on is is pretty insane. I mean, but I don't it, know. Di- it didn't disappear either. Like everyone in the news or people who are commenting are like, wow, like thanks Putin for curing COVID, and it's just like pl- other countries are still instituting like m- mask van mandates. I think Moderna is asking for like a second booster shot for adults. Um, mm-hmm. Unvaccinated yep. uh, transplant waitlist patients are literally being denied organs. Like there was this story a couple months back where it was just like, yeah, this kid threw to like flew to like three different countries. I think he was like five to get a heart transplant because they wouldn't allow him because he was unvaccinated it's like the kid's five years old the fucker needs a heart like there are more priorities here than a, a vaccine that's gonna fuck with his heart to begin with um and it just and, it, and this is where I, I i'm righteously angry where it's just like you bastards are literally telling like people with children um say goodbye to your dad because we can't give him a heart 
because of these like his ongoing medical problems. And even now, like I already had COVID and I, I managed to beat it immunosuppressed, but it just frustrates me because it's just like, oh, you're eligible to get the shot now because it's been three months since you got monoclonal antibody treatment. And it's just like there's more than enough data to tell me immunosuppressed people get like four or five of these shots and they still produce no immune response because we literally nuke our immune system every 12 hours. Like, yes. don't fuck yourself. Yes. I am so angry about this because you were killing an untold hundreds if not thousands of people and affecting all these families like i finally got to talk to the people whose child had died to give me my kidney and it's just like imagine your kid is dead and you make the decision to donate and those organs go to waste because like oh all we have left are unvaccinated transplant patients like there are no words other than just to go fuck yourself like i have nothing else to say here i'm just mad it's evil it's evil. I mean, these people yeah. d- deserve to go to prison for a very long time. But again, you know, I mean, I mean, who, well, as the title of the podcast incitates, I won't fed post, but uh, yeah. it should go further. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. But but hey, man, I mean, I mean, that's old news, right? We're all talking about uh, our, yeah, we're our, talking about war now. Are you our fucking gay little <laughs> yellow and blue flags? Zelensky is such a, a, a little cutie pie. This great little Ukrainian John Stewart. I fucking hate this guy, by the way. I hate this shit. Did you <laughs> oh guys my see, God. Do you guys I, see were, this clip of him like the other? Other day it's like it's like it's like filmed outside at night and he like walks up and i didn't even listen to what the fucking guy has to say because it's like uh, i mean i don't give a shit but like i like i usually don't go in on this level of shit but like it it literally looks like he's in front of a fucking green screen dude like the guy's not in fucking ukraine anymore i like refuse to believe he's there dude <laughs> well there I think are allegations that he's not in ukraine and what makes matters worse right and we talked like the civic religion <laughs> earlier where he you know he's like he's asking like western countries for more money via like a zoom call to like parliament and congress and like what what is it in parliament he invokes winston churchill he comes to the united states to talk to congress <laughs> via zoom call he mentions the day of infamy of pearl harbor and he mentions martin luther king jr he's like he had a dream i have a need and it's just like this is the state of like a, a western Holy discourse shit. where everything has to be based around world war ii the civil rights movement and that's it um, and you know, that's the only way that you can really conduct moral policy from this liberal, like hegemony that we operate under. Zelensky uh, brought up MLK. Yeah. Of course. Zelensky did, brought dude. up MLK. What? That's our, that's wow. he's besides George Floyd. He's our new George Washington in, in our myth. Uh, dude, dude, I'll just say this right now. I I've come up with an idea and hear me out. Might just be crazy enough to work. All right. Escape from New York style, right? You got snake Pliskin, bad guy, con. We need to send somebody in who's a bad enough motherfucker to like Lindsey Graham said, right? Just do what needs to be done, if you know what I mean, right? Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, who is sitting in a cell right now with the killer instinct that we need for this job? I'm saying, send Derek Chauvin to Russia, okay? <laughs> send Derek Chauvin to Russia and just have him do what needs to be done. We need a bad guy for a bad job, all right? To save and, uh, the world. Where, where, where's George Zimmerman then? Just get him. <laughs> Dude, suicide Yo. squad of guys that have killed yeah. black people. <laughs> yeah, the untouchables, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> That's and it's Stallone and Bruce the Willis. Untouchable. <laughs> yeah. You got the dirty dozen. It's like George Zimmerman and... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Dude. When we needed them most, they returned. <laughs> George Zimmerman, Kyle Rittenhouse, Derek Chauvin, and every other white cop that pulled the trigger while a camera was on. <laughs> and Charles Bronson. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna what remake was- Death Wish in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> what's it, what's the movie called? It's not Untouchables. What is it? Unbreak? What is it? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Right? The Expendables, bro. right? Yeah. God, what a horrible fucking name! You just like listed like three different movie names, but we all know <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> Holy the shit, OG yeah. uh, geezer teaser, right there, as they uh, like to call them. Absolutely. Yeah. No, Untouchables is uh, is the fucking it's Sean good, Connery. Right? Yeah, Untouchables yeah. slaps for real. And it's got that fucking it. battleship Potemkin fucking stairway scene with the fucking mm-hmm. the shootout. That shit's rocks, dude. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, it's just <laughs> I'm thinking about this fucking uh, the, the Redditors being sent over like it, it really. Uh, yeah. To whatever degree that's true, because that's that's almost too good to be true. But I'm sure it's happening, you know, like uh, like an ISIS 
there were people that were coming from like Europe that were just like, oh, I'm Muslim. I'm I'm in Europe, and uh, you know, I, I'm neck feeling beards mid- going over to fight for the caliphate. Oh yeah, we're gonna have our own Shemima yeah. Begums where it's just like, yeah, we were brides to the Azov Battalion, but we want to come back to the U.S. or whatever. I mean, there's just yeah. gonna be a bunch of redditors that were like, well, I, I came here to fight for my cam girl or whatever. Like, fuck Putin. I, I want my porn back or whatever. Yeah. But <laughs> and, and, like the other thing too is that the, the memes out of it have just been fucking great. And again, it goes back to like we we were living in, in a hyper real kind of war where it's just like no i've been playing hearts of iron 4 for 15 years like <laughs> my maps can help your generals and they're like no nah, fam you're going straight to the front go eat dirt <laughs> your dig- your job is to dig trenches <laughs> yo it's mad funny because like i remember we were talking about like is there going to be a draft and then slot was just like Man, we got so many proxies. Like, no, nope, we're not going to pull from here. And then somehow it's gone so roundabout that they're, they're they're pulling from us still, but not through draft by uh just overzealous redditors. Like, it's dude, li- literally, literally, they don't even have need to have a formal draft anymore. They just have like a draft by way of like entertainment media. Yeah, yeah, yeah just like Marvel, that's it's essentially Marvel what this movies. is, dude. It's like this is like this is like the the most recent highest form of like procured consumer identity is just oh, like you're shit. like hecking up dudes get you to like go lay your <laughs> life on the line, go lay your life on the line for like to to be honest, to be honest, like one of the most nihilistic pursuits I can possibly think of. Like at the very least, like going Joker mode and like doing some joker things on domestic soil at least has like some level of like discontent and belief and like feeling and passion behind it and whereas pushing this movement yeah whereas yeah. this is like literally like going uprooting ruining giving your life basically for like yeah. something that you don't even understand the first thing about basically uh if my congratulations, think- you revolutionary redditor who's like subbed to like late stage capitalism, and you have like <laughs> and, 15, and no children, thousand, yeah, and no children, child free or whatever, and you have like fifteen million karma. Um, you just died for like corporate American government interests in Ukraine. Like, thank you for making me. Thank you. Your your sacrifice of your useless life has just ensured that Nancy Pelosi's like trades just had a five percent increase in return of uh, investment amazing amazing <laughs> dude i think i think uh i think uh i think that this might end up being uh a slight w for uh the dissident right though because he, like hear me out right for the you people my attention <laughs> because you know for for a lot of people they'll, they'll obviously go and they'll see that this is a crock of shit and that'll be a radicalizing moment for them and then the other people that are like working real tight with azov battalion right come back these people just have a completely different view of politics by the time they're back on american soil they're just going to be you know they're just going to be completely radicalized against the people that they're fighting for uh this this might end up just uh, uh having the inverse <laughs> effect well and Which, this is the this is the funny thing about people uh commentating on this whether it's on the right or sort of like the post left crowd where it's just like okay gentlemen um you are watching a country like russia with like the highest abortion rate and declining fertility ifr rates yes. um that is now using the russian orthodox church to like wage this kind of war while importing muslim chechens and other like like foreign fighters to fight against a neo-Nazi battalion that is supported by American arms and a Jewish oligarch with a Jewish president of like one of the whitest countries in Eastern Europe. Like uh, have fun having discourse about that. (laughs) Yeah. Like this is, this is, this is incoherent. Like from the ground up, it's insane, dude. <laughs> it, it's yeah. in, in almost the pure Delusian sense. Like what we're witnessing is just foreign policy ad schizophrenia. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, when we were on, you were on last, when we were talking about uh, people like supporting China, just like <laughs> kind of meme supporting China. You know that just because it's like, oh, I can just project my politics onto them. But, dude, they uh, do make it fucking hard though, man. Like like I got to say like the fucking clip the clip yesterday or the day before of Joe Biden being like, "Oh, listen Jack, like I talked to the G fella yeah. and he's saying that democracy doesn't work in the, in in the <laughs> 21st century." And I'm like, like fucking G stop saying things that I like challenge. Like it's it's difficult, man. It's difficult. Like again, the qualifier is always I don't want to. It's like Orin perfectly put very concisely. Like, I'm not saying I want to live in China. 
right but like and god what was that fucking post where this guy this like this this guy was like you know to understand the east you got to understand that like that like xi and putin see the west as like so decadent and like thoroughly infested by this virtual professional class that's like mm. perfectly happy just like waging war on their own population and it's like right. jesus christ like how am i not gonna kind of want to like you guys on yeah. some level yeah. you know uh, but maybe yeah. that's part of the psyop, you know. I think it's kind yeah, of part of it because Putin definitely had made an address to what he called like the Russian fifth column, <laughs> where he's just like, yeah, like if you don't live here and but you advocate like for X Y Z values, like, but I understand you need to have your gender freedoms and your caviar. Like he was calling out like the petite bourgeoisie or whatever, and it's just like ah, I can see why some people would want to get on board with like going for this guy, whether left or right. But the other thing too is, is I just wonder how much of this like base disease thing is also like a reaction because like you see the the media clamp down they're like okay no more effeminate male celebrities uh we're gonna cut down on social media regulation we're or cut down on it and regulate it we're gonna make sure no video games things mm. but i'm thinking to myself your entire managerial class goes to american universities mm-hmm. and right. it's just like you know you're you're being exposed to the same paused shit that we are and then they come back to china to help run your government how much of this is a reaction to your own mistake you're like oh fuck we sent them to america i was just um, gonna we need to respond and like correct course <laughs> it's a remedy dude it's 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 interesting it's interesting but uh, is it is it a remedy or is it like reacting but maybe like the boulder is already rolling off the mountain like that that'll be the interesting thing to see in a couple of years because like right you do have a population of about half the size of the u.s like 165 million that are over 65 not working they don't really have a social security net like we do and of course you have the cultural impetus of taking care of them right your your elders and having them live with you but yes. both sexes have to work um people aren't having children and there's this sort of like rising movement of just um i don't want to work anymore i'm not going to fucking do anything but like the chinese government doesn't send these men out there to like work in like their places where they invest in like south america or africa so they localize they don't do anything with their own population and so it's just like what the fuck's gonna happen you know uh, i'm very curious to see because it's just you're kind of seeing a, a mirror also internally with the, those same problems so uh, remedy or maybe too little too late who knows I don't know. I do see I do see like and I, I don't know. I mean, I maybe I'll say like a very naive thing here. But, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about, you know, uh, both members, both heads of a household, uh, like going and, and working full time to support their families and everything like, you know, I see needing to needing to compete in a global market and how that just sets up workers to fail because you're just you're competing with people that are always going to be able to lowball you so like so the idea of like having wages high enough uh to to raise a family on one income becomes like insane right having a shorter work week becomes insane and i i know that we're so many steps away from getting to the point where maybe we could like actually address those things but one thing that i see shit libs doing that i I kind of I kind of get a little bit stoked about is just like is just being like, what was it? That fucking football team in uh, in like England that was like owned by some Russian oligarch. And they're like, yeah, you don't own this anymore. Like, go fuck yourself. Get the fuck out of here. Right. Like the neighborhood that I used to fucking live in. It's just like a, there were just like two condos next to each other that came up across the street. They were just like owned by uh, one by some like big ass uh, Chinese businessman and one by a fucking russian oligarch right and it's like why the fuck do these motherfuckers own a slice of my fucking neighborhood dude like if we were if we were less interconnected in this way i would be happier and like yeah it's like kind of for the wrong reasons but like i see that happening a little bit recently and i can't help but kind of like that and i don't know again like i said maybe that's kind of naive because so many other dominoes would need to fall to even like take to like chip away at that um, the two white like pills I've kind of noticed is one, um, I'm kind of seeing like the new left or whatever exists of like, what is the political left these days? That's not the establishment mm-hmm. talk about 
exactly what you just described. And then like you have like the Josh Hawley national conservative types that are like, yeah, like this is a national security problem. Um, it's a little concerning that like China's buying up all this real estate. It's yes. a little concerning that someone like Bill fucking Gates owns all this farmland. Um, and, and the fact that there, there's this like coalescing or convergence is kind of reassuring. And the same thing about like um, single income households. Like it was really weird the other day to see Blake Masters respond with a video to shoe on head as like a campaign ad about right. how he wants to get there to have like single income households back again for families. And I was like, what a weird fucking world where this like Peter Thiel Senate candidate um, is responding to just like, you know, a 30 year old shoe on head about politics. Right. I, we have totally converged now. I, but I want that for me now. I want to have that kind of influence. Dude, fuck yeah, man. Well, and the funny, I mean, I mean, I think it's just like, it's like all of these, all these platitudes about how like globalism is like a fucking anti-Semitic dog whistle and, and all of this stuff. And like, oh, you're going to sound like Alex Jones. Like, a lot of that does kind of fall by the wayside when, you know, you're living in one of these fucking, you know, big Western cities where, you're getting priced out of the place you fucking grew up in because somebody mm. never going to set foot in your fucking hometown is buying mm. up your block, dude. Yep. And I think it was Toronto where they were like, no more foreign capital buying up houses here. We can't do it. Right. I think they're, I could Canada. Uh, Canada is way worse than us. And so is Australia. Like there, you can't buy a home in either of those two countries in America. You could probably make it barely, but yeah, those places, the housing market, even for apartments is fucking gone. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, it's absurd. It's absurd. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. BlackRock buying up property in, in China. Like, I remember when Detroit went down, China just fucking buying up, like, blocks and blocks and getting on the cheap and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, dude, and, and there's, like, BlackRock executives that no longer work at BlackRock are, like, financial advisors to the administration. <laughs> so it's just, like, yeah. Larry Fink is the guy that's kind of, like, basically running the U.S., uh, at least on its economic domestic policy. Uh, it seems like a yeah. great idea. Um and yeah, I guess we hit uh, plenty of time so we can chop this in half. We hit like fucking yeah. two and a half hours, dude. Yeah, this is great. Uh, this was, oh, yeah, a, this fucking, was a lot of fun. Yeah, this was a fucking banger, dude. For sure, yeah. <laughs> we covered the, the gauntlet. We, we we ran the gamut and all that, so. Dude, I'm sorry I made uh, it late, dude. I literally forgot about the difference between uh, <laughs> between Pacific and Eastern time. I thought I wasn't going to make it, too, because I was so hungover. I was like, I'm not going to make this, but I just chugged mad coffee. So. <laughs> it was just, it's just like a double whammy. Down. Like, it just like you're, you, you're just hungover as fuck, and then I just forget how time works. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks you're for being patient, dude. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, don't yeah. worry about it. I, I actually didn't know where all of you all were, so I was just like, oh, a bunch of fucking East Coasters. Like, I just got to get everyone on, on, on schedule or whatever. And I'm like, oh, no, everyone's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I appreciate you being flexible because yeah this, we're, we're getting used to like a new schedule because uh yeah we're, we're trying to record saturday morning so oh, okay but, yeah much appreciated man all right that was part one of our episode if you'd like to listen to part two you can find that at patreon.com slash fedpost thanks for listening